Today we're going to be talking about perimeter and area. What we're going to be able to do when we're done is calculate the area of geometric figures, calculate the perimeter of geometric figures, use Pythagorean theorem to find the lengths of the sides of a right triangle, and to solve word problems involving perimeter, area, and or right triangles. There is a lot of vocabulary that we're going to need to know for this, but most of it you've probably already seen. So we'll just go start through it and then see where we end up. So here we are with our formulas. The first formula that we have here is for a triangle and it's for the area. If we know the height of the triangle, then the area of the triangle can be calculated using one half base times height. If we don't know the height of the triangle, we can use something called Heron's formula, which allows us to calculate the area using the sides of the triangle. Heron's formula is a equals s, the square root of s times s minus a, where a is one of the sides, s times s minus b, where b is another side, times s minus c, where c is the third side. s, though, is the perimeter of the triangle times one half. Remember, the perimeter of a triangle you get by adding the three sides together. Our next formula is the formula for the area of a rectangle or a parallelogram. Its area will be base times height. Remember that the height of a parallelogram is not always its side, so we're going to have to be careful when we're using that one. And then we have the formula for the area of a trapezoid. It is one half the sum of base 1 plus base 2 times height. Remember, base 1 and base 2 are the top and the bottom sides of the parallelogram that are parallel, I mean, excuse me, of the trapezoid that are parallel to each other. Now for our cir circle formulas. In our circle formulas, we have the circumference of the circle, which is the same thing as the perimeter. And the circumference of the circle is equal to 2 times pi times r. And remember, r stands for the radius, which is how far it is from the center of the circle to one of the sides, or to the outside of the circle. The area of a circle is area equals pi times the radius squared. Finally, we have the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. And we have this formula that says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Almost everybody remembers that. But the thing you've got to remember carefully is that a and b are the two legs of the triangle. They are what make up the right angle and C is always opposite the right angle. It is always the label that's put on the hypotenuse, the part that doesn't make up the right angle. Now I think we're ready to start some problems. So here's our first problem. Find the perimeter and area of the figure below. And we have this figure where we have 12 on this side, 10, 7, and 2. So we're going to do this one first. All right, here's our shape represented on the board. We need to find its perimeter. Normally, to find the perimeter of any shape, we're going to add together the lengths of all the sides. Well, our shape has a length of side 12 here, one of side 10 here, one of side 7 here, and then a side whose length we don't know, another side whose length we don't know, and a last side of length 2. We need to figure out the length of the two sides that we're missing. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to assume, if you, when we looked at the real picture, this appeared to be rectangular, so that these corners appear to be right angles, as did this space right here. So if this is a rectangle, one thing you should remember about rectangles is that the opposite sides are the same length. And so although this is not drawn to scale, this is of length 2. That means the rest of the way down has to be the rest of this distance 10. So this side will be 10 minus 2, or of length 8. Now this side, same thing is going to happen. Here we have 7 across. We needed to get a total of 12, so this side must be the rest of that. So it will be 12 minus 7, or length 5, will be that side. Now we're set for adding all of our sides together to get the perimeter. So our perimeter is going to be 12 plus 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 7 plus 10, which will give us a total perimeter of, 
let's see, 10, 20, 32, 37, looks like 44. I hope I got that one right. Notice we didn't ask for the area of this because right now all we were really interested in is just making sure we had all the sides to find the perimeter. For our next example, we're going to find the area of this shape. First thing we need to know is what is this shape? Well, this shape is a parallelogram. Remember, a parallelogram has four sides and opposite sides are parallel. So this, we're going to assume this is a parallelogram. Now the formula, if you recall, for parallel area of a parallelogram is base times height. Well, the base of this parallelogram is easy to see. It's the 22 across the bottom. But what about the height? Well, that's what this extra dotted line is in here for. The height of a parallelogram is any line that goes from one side of the parallelogram, heads to the base, and makes a right angle with the base. It's also going to make a right angle with the side opposite the base since it is a parallelogram. So how do we find the area of this? Well, basically we're going to just put in base times height. So the total area will be 22 times 5 or 110. Now for the next one, we want to find the area of this picture. Well, this is a trapezoid. Remember the trapezoid, you have two sides that are parallel. Those are called the bases. And then you have two other sides which may or may not be parallel. The dotted line in here, just like in the parallelogram, is the height. So let's take this and we'll put it on the board and see how it's going to come out to be in terms of its area. So here we have our parallelogram drawn. Now remember the formula for the area of a parallelogram is equal to one half base one plus base two times height. Well, which one is base one and base two? It doesn't matter. We can either pick 120 or 40 to be base one and then the other one is base two. So our formula when we fill it in will be one half of 120 plus 40 and then the height is this is the measurement 30. So when we are done filling all that into our calculator, we will have, hang on a minute, I gotta find my calculator. After putting in that into the calculator, I got that this comes out to be 2,400. And since it's area, whatever the units would be, would be squared. Now we're gonna move on to the next example. In this example, we're asked to find the area of this figure. Well, this is a triangle. And in this triangle, the dotted line again indicates the height. Since we have the height, we'll use the basic height uh, area formula that has the height. Remember, that's one half base times height. So let's see how that's going to calculate out. Well, here we have our triangle drawn on the board. And we want to calculate one half base times height. Well, the base of the triangle is the 9.2. So the area is going to be 1 half times 9.2. Now the height of the triangle is this line that makes a right angle with the base of the triangle. So it goes from one vertex toward the base and makes a right angle with the base. That line is 3.5. This other 8 is just another side of the triangle and it's not relevant to finding our area. So when I calculate 1 half of 9.2 times 3.5, I get an area of 16.1 square units. Again, the height of the triangle was here and it was inside. Sometimes we'll have heights that are outside and we may have an example of that next. I was right.